over the weekend as a homage to See No Evil, Hear No Evil, the film starring yep. Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder yep. in 1989. We thought, could you do it for real, where uh, one of them was deaf, one yep. of them was blind. They worked together as a team. Now, they had high stakes they, to solve a murder, thereby clearing their name. Yeah. We just had to get around your house and live our lives yes, pretty yes. much. But it was still, look, it was incredible. And first and foremost, we do need to point out that the whole weekend has given us a phenomenal understanding or appreciation. Mm. I don't think even though we went through it, we still don't have an understanding of what this would be like to live your whole life being vision impaired or hearing impaired because it, it affects just everything, like every second we can, of every day. We could day. agree, though, that we wouldn't be mates. No. <laughs> No way to communicate. There's Unless no I got be... better at lip reading. Yeah, perhaps. But I still would be annoyed with how loud you were speaking. Well, the thing is, I though, wouldn't hang out with you. I know, and I don't blame you because <laughs> it was the funny thing is, not only were we having to deal with one of our senses being taken away, but also then the added responsibility of having to look after a friend yeah. that's had one of their senses taken yeah. away. So it was a double whack. You, uh... I'd much rather just hang around with people that would dote on me <laughs> rather than have to look after you. You, um. It, look, at some times you were against me calling you my maid. Yeah, I was against that. At first, for a good deal of the week, and I thought you were just calling me a mate. And I was like, oh, that's good. Andy, you know, he's vulnerable. He's reaching out to me. He wants me to know I'm his mate. Of course I'm his mate. I'm here. Then when you started writing it down for me, I realised you were calling me your mate. <laughs> but, uh, hey, we sh- we've got so much of, of the weekend to play for people. Yep. We pick things up. This is the very first time I woke up blind on Saturday morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. Good? Yeah, I, good? I made the bed. I think. Thumbs up. Feeling thumbs up? Here's your pad. You made the bed. I know I'm impressed. You should see my room, it's a mess. But I know you can't catch me for being messy for once. <laughs> um, I dreamt about being best mates with someone else. Well, dreams can come true. Just give me the word. I'm out of here. (laughs) It was already taking so long to even get... That was two sentences. Just looking, listening back to it now, I was like, well, this is going to take a while to get through because every time Andy said something, I just nodded to acknowledge that he'd said something and then uh, couldn't understand it until he had to write it down again. Hey, you were key to help me on the first day. Yeah, well, there you Um, were. You're sitting in your boxer shorts. You're blind. Yeah, but you you would would help... Like a newborn kangaroo. (laughs) Let me help you find the mother's tea. They... Oh, got a giant bottle. <laughs> They're often in boxer shorts. <laughs> Thing is, this baby kangaroo knew exactly where everything was. He knew. I didn't exactly... know he had that much pouch awareness. I <laughs> thought you were helpless. <laughs> he knew where his clothes were, <laughs> and was. I mean, yes, I appreciate how exuberant you were going into helping. I him. had a mate that was in trouble, Ando. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is how I went about getting me dressed on the first day. Not needed. Ready? You stay there. Stay there to get dressed. This is Just lie a, down. This is conserve not, your energy. I don't need to conserve. Andy, <laughs> we've got a big day ahead of us. Stay okay. there. Stay there. I know where your stuff is, okay? I know where my stuff is. Shh. I can't hear you anyway. Talk as loud as you want. I know. Stay there and I'll dress you. Get off. Where do you keep your sticky tape? Do you want to wear a sports jacket? Am I ready to go? No, it's hot outside. Don't mess up the wall. Don't mess up the wall. You want to wear this? It's this sh- know- shiny blue jacket no, you like. I know where everything is. I don't want that on. Get. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Here, mate. Come on. Let's just get you dressed. Something simple. Arms up. I don't want. I'm not arms up. Arms up. T shirt on. This is not a t shirt. <laughs> it's called a maxi dress. And I knew you'd resist it at first, but try it. I think it's one of Meg's. It's just, it's casual, it's summery, you can dress it up, you can dress it down, okay, it put some wedges on, <laughs> simple jewellery, or nothing. You're yelling, it breathes, and I'm not wearing this, and you get are, out. Don't wear it like that, everyone will see you, you have to wear it up. I'm currently wearing a dress for no reason. Yeah, it is the season, of course it's the season, it's summer, it's a summer dress. Well, I'll just have to take this dress. No, I'm putting it back, I'm putting back your girlfriend's dress. <laughs> Get out of there. What are you doing? <laughs> if you're in any of Megan's clothes, including undies, they're going to be burnt. What's that? It looks great. <laughs> 
ladies and gentlemen, that sent the, set the tone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you to everyone that bids so heavily on my auction items on eBay over the weekend. <laughs> Complete secondhand wardrobe from M. Gale. <laughs> hey, Mr. Andy. Hey, it's fair to say that we missed a lot of stuff. Like for different areas, of course. I yeah. missed anything visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you I was running anything sound based. I was running tours through your house, yeah. just hanging out the front, going Andy Lee House tour eight dollars fifty. Stay very quiet. <laughs> Shoes off, and we're going to see some great stuff. While you were just sitting on the couch listening to your iPod. <laughs> well, this the, the, there's a few things, the few key things I need to tell you. Yeah, key stories you missed. Yeah, what happened? Okay, I'll, I'm going to start with a funny one. Yep. Then maybe a, a sadder one. For okay, you. yeah. Or, and, and then then a, will we finish with a funny one? No, no, I'm going to then go for an even worse one. <laughs> oh, at first I thought it was a roller coaster. No, no, it's just a slide. It's a downward spiral. We're just going straight down. <laughs> first one was um, you will remember at Lawn Bowls. Yeah. We went lawn bowling with my friends because I had that booked. There were, as, as a hen's party. Yes. Yeah, well, there was, there was lots of uh, a bride to be and all her friends there, and yeah. they came out and and, uh, and and came and said hello. I remember dragging yeah. you into the hens and running off, and <laughs> leaving you yeah. as hen feed. Yeah, uh, and then I got hit on the ankle by a ball. <laughs> Good fun. No, not really. But uh, Jezza, yeah, who does all the web stuff for us here, yeah, um, who uh, has featured on the show from time to time, he gets a little muddled up at times. Sure, yeah. even though he's from England and should yeah. grasp the language. Yeah, yeah. When he was away moving a car at that point, came back, someone had told him that we got attacked by hens. Yeah. And he went, what, chickens? <laughs> oh, jeez. real life chickens come out and got them. I wish I was filming that. See, that's the kind of thing I missed all weekend. I know. And we, laughed, he- we laughed for ages. Good. We, had, we had a great time laughing at that. Meanwhile, I'm just wandering around looking at the sky because I can't hear anything. I'm out of every conversation. Secondly. Yeah. Well, this did- is the sad story. Your dad wasn't convinced that you uh, were actually dead. I could see that in his face. We yeah. got it with my did dad you, on did Sunday. Did you detect a fair bit of eye rolling? Oh, it's hard to yeah. it's hard to differentiate <laughs> differentiate that from just the usual disappointment about <laughs> any other thing I've been up to. <laughs> but he spent a lot of time with me going. When he said hello, I said hi back, and he he, he knew what I was saying. I, I could lip read a bit by that stage, <laughs> but that's just that was one thing that you needed to know. Well, Dad, you know, he's a fan of conspiracy theories. Yeah. He wouldn't have thought you were blind either. I'm surprised <laughs> he didn't try and like hit you in the face with a baseball bat to test it, <laughs> see if you flinched. The third one, and this is the one I really weighed up telling you or not, but um, remember when we were out for dinner, and you said to me at one point, "The waitress is quite cute." Yep, yep. And uh, I wrote on a pad that you were flirting quite loudly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's which, not flirting. That's just a casual observation. <laughs> to which you said, um, "Help me out." So when she came back, <laughs> yeah, I tried to wingman you. I was there. Cheers, thank and you. I, and I was there, and I was like, flying oh, blind, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> How I mean, do you know it was the right one? Well, because of course of her voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we had the same waitress the whole time. And I said, "Oh, look, uh, yeah, well, it's it's been tough. Da, da, da. Hamish is doing a great job. He's helped me around and everything." And, I was probably just nodding and, and, and thumbs up at that stage. Yeah. And then she said, well, you know, he's made more of a mess of his plate and he's not blonde. Oh. <laughs> so she wasn't impressed. <laughs> so I went, oh, no, he's probably just stuffing around for the cameras and stuff. But, you know, yeah, of course, wearing the head mask and stuff, he's, he's not at his most attractive. And then she said, yeah. I've never found him attractive. Well, uh, that's a shame. <laughs> so, that's so, a shame. Uh, and she wasn't bonding with you because she was also blind? <laughs> no. Positive she could see. I, yeah, I think she could see. And all I wanted to say to you is if you were thinking of heading back to the restaurant. Not going to. Why do? <laughs> that's tough. But thanks, mate. Maybe <laughs> deafness is bliss. <laughs> This is Hamish and Andy. Haim, according to me, <laughs> you were not stupid or useless. Thank you. You were amazing on the weekend. And according to me, <laughs> you were... Hang on, guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, you did a very good job as well. Amazing job, because you had your vision removed on the weekend. I had my hearing removed as part of our See No Evil, Hear No Evil challenge. <laughs> And today we are running people through our adventures over the weekend, how we cope together as a team. A big issue was driving. Well, the thing is, uh, hearing impaired people are allowed to drive. Yeah. You're not allowed to drive professionally. If you're a truck driver or a bus driver or so on, you can't do that. Formula One would be in that category, I imagine. (laughs) Um, So, Haim, the thing was... uh, We wanted to be as safe as possible and we wanted to work as a team. Yeah. So you were to be uh, my chauffeur. 
No. I was <laughs> picked as the best man for the job to get the team around. <laughs> team captain. <laughs> okay. As so as sh- captain, I had a lieutenant, you, still yeah. a good rank, don't be jealous, <laughs> <laughs> and gave you a series of signals like, you know, hand signal for sirens and things like that. Well, I was in the back seat behind you uh, for tapping you on the shoulders. For different which things. felt very chauffeur-like. I'm not sure if you're in a suit. I can only assume you were wearing a suit and a hat. Completely nude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the main thing was uh, in uh, in my car. Yeah, there are sensors, reverse sensors, and it's quite tough getting out of the garage. Yeah, you got a very tight back out. So I was going to tap on your <laughs> on your shoulders. Yep. Uh, basically, matching the pattern of the beeps, so you knew how far you had tapping on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. It was a good plan to begin with. It's a heck of a plan. But I suppose when we hear this back, maybe uh, whether, whether I remember it going very well. Whether whether I panicked early or whether you because I couldn't were... see your face, I don't know what you were saying. I assume <laughs> everything. I mean, the car seems fine. This is what happened. Okay, so uh, hearing impaired people are allowed to drive, uh, but Hamish is a terrible driver at the best of times. So this is going to help. So Sorry I'm about planning that. to be in the back and be his ears. Um, ears the. Is the garage door open? Yes, yeah. mate. Okay. <laughs> Good. Here we go. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Can you hear any beeping? Is the reversing sensor on? No, nah, it's not on. Yes, it's on. Is it beeping? It's beeping. I'm tapping. Beeping. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop. We've stopped, mate. Oh. We stopped about ten minutes ago. <laughs> God, way to play it cool there, old panicky backseat driver. <laughs> it must broke my shoulders. Well, when we look back at the footage today, and you can get it at hamishdanny.com, the pictures, you were so close. Yeah, he knows the car, mate. I don't need ears to drive very he is. well. He's a regular Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> Hamish and Andy. Now, let's concentrate on the difficulties you had. And I, I must say, it should have... You... I went through being scared. Yeah. You went through being more frustrated. I just kept frustrated. Because the thing about blindness is people see that you're blind Mm. and they accommodate Mm. for you. And I probably had it a little easier than most deaf people because I had giant sort of earmuffs and like earplugs and sort of music and everything cancelling out my hearing. But for most deaf people, obviously, you can't tell. Yeah. But I still experience the frustration that they must go through because people will speak to you. You have no idea what they're saying. They say it louder. Then they get angry that you don't understand them. Mm. But then you get angry at them for getting angry at you. And then they just walk off and um, that's how wars start. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, home, we've got a couple of things here. First of all, we meet a lot of people. Yeah. And often I wasn't quick enough to write down what people were saying uh, and, and give it to you. So you took upon trying to guess, I suppose, because they were waiting, looking at us, going, what's happening? It's my only strategy. <laughs> we went to uh, to William, William Anglis. Yeah, uh, we actually had a cooking class cooking booked class, in. A cooking class booked in, and a couple of ladies came out to meet us. This, everybody at home, gives you an example of the people, how the routine we'd have to go through when we met up. With certain people, and Hamish definitely wasn't up to lip reading. His lip reading skills definitely weren't up to scratch quite yet. Nick? You're from Adelaide. Uh, marketing. Oh, ma- <laughs> What's your name? Nick. Nick. And this is Rebecca. We're from Hi. marketing. Okay, great. Okay. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Beck. Men. No. No. Beck. Yeah, oh, what do you, do you like? What's your name? Do you want to write it down? Nick and Beck. Yeah, we're gonna put. Nick. N- Nikki. Yeah. Nikki. Thank you. And. and- Ben. Ben. No. Ben. Nick and Ben. Oh, Nick and Ben. I thought Ben was a bad guess. Ben was optimistic. <laughs> As if her name was Ben, though. I would have gone with Beck for ages before I thought, no, maybe this girl is called Ben. <laughs> hey, it got really frustrating for you. Uh, kind of Saturday afternoon, I wanted to catch up with my mates. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a good chat. And basically most people, if they couldn't hear... Would sit there quietly. Yeah. Well, what's what? What are your options? As as a hearing impaired person, you sit there. Everyone's mouths are moving. They're all having a good laugh. It's one of the most annoying things in the world. You get so lonely. You just get so bored. You become a spectator on life, or you take a punt and you try and join in. <laughs> Tate got three for seventeen or four overs. Mm-hmm. 
How's that? He was three for eleven, I think. I yeah. think he's sorry, three for thirteen. Three for thirteen off. I told you he's got to play in the ashes. We well, bowled. Uh, he bowled the third fastest ball in history as well last night. I'd probably regret backing rollerblading over <laughs> skateboarding because there was a time there where either one of them could have been the cool thing, and I think I should have gone with skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just joining in. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't know you guys were talking about cricket, but I did detect sport was being discussed. <laughs> See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Weekend Challenge, 50 hours, you without hearing, my, myself without uh, sight. If we on the 7pm project tonight, we'll catch up with them just to show a little bit of what we got up to. A few snippets, a few highlights. I'm not sure if this will make it, because this was a bit of a fight. This Probably, was a low point. <laughs> this was a low point for us. Saturday evening. I blame low blood sugar, mm. specifically a very low amount of butter chicken in my system. <laughs> now, I need probably more butter chicken than the average person to run at optimum levels. <laughs> I did want some Indian. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I uh, was met with baffling resistance from it, the one man that could operate a phone within the house. Obviously, Hayme wouldn't be able to chat to anyone, so this is how it went down. Dinner time. Ando. Yep. You awake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want curry for dinner? Yeah. Do you want Indian? <laughs> yeah? Very good. All right. I've got the menu. You, I'll dial the number. No, 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 no. no. You speak. No, not now. Not now. 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yeah, I'm not hungry. It's 8.30. I don't believe you. It's 8.30 now. You're lying to me. It's not 8.30. Call... In 30 minutes. Call in 30 minutes, mate. It takes so long to get Indian delivered. Mate, that's that's the final offer. (laughs) Don't do this. Final. Final offer? (laughs) We're not negotiating. I'm dying. Your friend is dying and he needs your voice and ears to order for him. Unfortunately, my hands are tied on this one. There is nothing I can do. I hate you. (laughs) You're being a (laughs) five-year-old. Come back in half an hour. What? Come come back. Yeah, whatever. I'm not interested. (laughs) Utilising my power of vision, I ran away to a corner to try and call the Indian restaurant myself. Have they answered? Hello? 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 What are you doing? I'm, I'm deaf. Please don't say anything. Just listen if you can hear me. I would like to place an order, but I can't hear you, but I'm very hungry. Could I please have one butter chicken, one pumpkin masala, some naan bread, some papadums, and some rice? Deliver in one hour. No, do not listen to the other voice. Deliver in one hour. Only listen to this voice. Please deliver in one hour. Please order. deliver it soon. And and a chicken tikka masala. Cancel the order. No, thank you. I'm Please cancel- don't. We are cancelling the order. Ow! You stepped on my foot. Where's he gone? Where's the phone? Haim then ran away, but soon returned, saying that they'd called him back. It's them. Give it to me. Please just. Yeah. Please talk to them. Hello. You're on. You're on. You're on. Hello. Hello. This the the um the. Uh, Oh, the curry munchies. Yeah, great. Yeah, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna have to cancel that. No thanks. That's all good. You said no thanks. No, she said, "Would I like extra poppadoms?" I said, "No thanks." I swear on your mother's life, you did not just cancel that order. I swear on your mother's life. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want medium level drama, see Mel Gibson's new film, Edge of Darkness. If you want high tension, I refer you to the Indian order fiasco. <laughs> Hi, Mish and Andy. You all uh, occasionally or, or quite often catch up mm. with your dad on a Sunday morning to play some table tennis. Bit of a, uh, bit of a tradition. Mm. Um, me versus dad. He. Has got a table tennis table in the park across the road from his house. He After heavy lobbying. <laughs> absolutely campaigned and petitioned yeah. the council. Uh, something he now denies, yeah. to which we say, Dad, show me another park that has a table tennis table in it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, But we were going to catch up with him yeah. um, because we had to go par- about our daily lives as we normally would in a, as part of our See No Evil, Hear No Evil challenge. Well, that's right. Just because you were blind and I was deaf, it didn't mean that we just ha- could hide in the house mm. all weekend. Had to... Had to to honour existing commitments. Now, Dad had said to me 
earlier in the week texted me and said, uh, I've, I can organise a, a special bat yeah. for Andy. Yeah. To which we said, wouldn't you go a special ball? <laughs> Because that's normally how vision impaired people play sports. Mm. A tennis ball or a cricket ball or a golf ball or whatever mm. that makes noise so they know where the ball is. That's not how Dad's brain no, works. No, not for him. Hey. Thought, what if I just got him a bat so enormous <laughs> he couldn't miss? <laughs> but hey, I, on our on my way here, I was expecting a couple an hour off. You know, I was expecting. Yeah. All right, this is Hamish's time with his dad. Yep. I'll communicate for him, and uh, but you know, obviously, I'll be on the adder and I'll let them bond. Yep. Didn't quite work out like that. Have a listen. <laughs> now listen, Andy, I've got something special for you. Yeah. Today, I went out and I made you a special bat. Off the table tennis. The table tennis. Uh, I just want you to put it here, mate. Now, does it meet uh, international regulations? No. Steiger would probably be chasing me for the copyright on this. (laughs) To prevent chafing. Uh, that wasn't quite what... Dad, I'm said. still your son. You have to look after me. I'm helpless and stranded and deaf. Then, uh, that's All good. I can see is a lot of eye rolls from Dad. <laughs> we just played uh, table tennis with Noel and um, there wasn't a lot of sympathy for you, Ham. Ham. That's a bit for disaster. Ham, no sympathy for you. No. Dad, no sympathy for me. <laughs> he just really didn't acknowledge that I was battling through anything. He stole you from me. He wouldn't let me touch you. <laughs> Come here, Andy. He's just messing around with the old show at the table. Don't let him guide you around. So much of teamwork. It's like Gene Wilder's dad coming in halfway through and pushing him over and taking care of Richard Pryor in the movie. <laughs> Small RC, no evil here, no evil joke there for those not familiar with the 1989 film. But it's true, Anna. Dad spent the whole time very worried about your well-being, having a go at me for not looking after you well enough, and any time I said to him, Dad, I'm battling, I'm deaf, just rolling his eyes and pushing me away. It was a classic case. Like that elephant at the zoo that's not bonding with its baby. He wanted me as your son, his son a bit more. And he always has, to be honest. Let's get it out on the table. From the moment he met you, he was impressed with your athleticism, with your good looks... With your loyalty to your family, he's always been a, an Andy Lee fan. <laughs> and I would, I would happily go on thirteen ten sixty now. What? Do either one of your parents or both your parents like another kid better than you? <laughs> he's very proud of you. He's very proud. Well, of I you. love Noel. Now, look, I'm not guy. saying he's got anything against me, but when you and I go face to face with Dad, it's clear who the favourite is. I mean, Dad and I have a terrific relationship. Love the guy. Yeah. Just, uh, I'm no match for you. <laughs> Dad had gone to great effort crafting and making a giant bat for Andy because he's always been a bit of an Andy fan and uh, had done nothing to accommodate his son, his blood and bone, his genetic material grown into a man. Did nothing for me uh, to help me with my deafness. Didn't even bring a pad and pen. Glenn, on 13 10 60, your dad liked someone better than you? Yeah, he sure did. Who was, uh, he? Who was he? About 10 years ago when I started playing football for this football club, Tugger on Hawks, uh, I there was a guy playing in my team called Jay. Jay's a very good footballer. Yeah. And my dad decided he liked him more than me. <laughs> How did he display and this affection? He displayed it by when I first had the opportunity to introduce him to Jay, he shook his hand and with me standing right next to him, said, gee, I wish my son could play football like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough oh, pill to swallow, isn't it, Glenn? It's a tough one, Glenn, but, uh, but thank you. You joined an illustrious <laughs> company in Hamish Blake. Tim on 131060, what's your story, mate? Is uh, a situation where your parents like another kid more than you? Oh, yeah, g'day. Um, no, it's actually a situation where my friend's parents have liked me better than him. Oh, okay, <laughs> good, good. It's a nice place to be, isn't it, Tim? <laughs> it is. It's a good feeling. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, you've got um, two sets of parents. Uh, okay, Tim, what happened? <laughs> um, he's a bit of a slacker, right? And so his um, parents went on holidays, but he, was, he didn't go on holidays with them. But they paid me to house sit and look after their house and their pets. <laughs> what? They didn't trust their son. Are you guys the same age? <laughs> yes. He's, oh, he's a year older than me. Oh, you're, you're younger. Older. He's older. He's actually older. <laughs> you're younger, and you've been financed by his parents to go over as the more responsible one. Yep. Tim, well, when you visit the house, do you revel sometimes in the fact that you can just drop a little mini achievement that you've scored during the week to see them uh, pat you on the back? <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that happen before. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, on 13, 10, 60, did uh, your parents like another kid more than you? Yeah, my, my, my father... Uh, 
well, back when I was playing uh, cricket over the summer, we had to play Saturday and Sunday. So we invited this guy, one of my best mates, Chris, over to stay the night so we could take him the following morning. Mm. And uh, obviously, after a day's cricket, the uniform needs a wash. So Dad goes ahead and washes the uniform. Come Sunday morning, I went to put it on and it was still dirty. And when I questioned him and said, why wasn't mine washed? He said, well, I had to wash Chris's first. <laughs> I mean, we love Chris. He's a good player. He's well, a great kid. Deserved his uniform washed as well, but, you know, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. We've got to do this again one day. We've got to do it again. I love it. This is Hamish and Andy. Hey, um... Our See No Evil, Hear No Evil Challenge. People yes. can watch on 7 p.m. We'll head back on. We went on uh, you uh, hearing impaired, myself vision impaired on Friday. I have which... no idea what was being said or what I ended up saying. Either do I. Probably a disaster. And Could hence... have been terrible TV. <laughs> yes. But we're back on this evening show a little bit of the weekend. Yeah. Um, there was a, a, an interesting moment. Well, this caught me. I mean, I'm sure it caught you unawares because I don't think you're anticipating having an anxiety attack, but... We were leaving the 7pm project. We're in the car park uh, there at Channel 10. We're all walking back to the car. Now, there's always talking happening as we're walking along because we've got a few people with us sort of filming it and stuff. Mm. And also I can see mouths moving and I assume, but I just got used to that over the weekend. Everyone's just talking around me. I have no idea what's going on. Then you were sitting on the back of the car, just sort of slumped against it, acting a little bit weird. Mm. I was hoping that you – I was trying to make you get your pad out and, and let me know what was going on because I didn't really know why we'd stopped or what was going on. Turns out you're having a bit of a flip, <laughs> <laughs> which took me a while to get because I, I was the last to cotton on. And I and I obviously – Weren't planning to flip it, out. In hindsight, yeah. uh, would have loved to have just been the macho man and gone – did it did it with my eyes closed <laughs> the whole week. But, but you did do it with your eyes closed. But, but about this stage you were hating having your eyes closed. Around about two hours in and I, I can sympathize with people, I suppose, who have had vision and lost it. And lose it suddenly. In in, in an accident or something because the I've never seen you like it. I've never I've, seen you so rattled I've in, never in my life. I've had an anxiety attack in my life. I I absolutely hated going on and the, the, the TV show. I was so scared. I don't know why, but the whole time we are on the TV show, I was in trouble. Yeah. I, I knew I was in trouble. We went to the ad break. Normally, in that, lot deeply. in that situation, you picture everyone in their underpants, but of course you couldn't see anyone. That didn't help. <laughs> you had that trick taken away from yeah. you. I thought everyone was in their underpants behind my blindfold, but I couldn't <laughs> quite work it out. Um, I was in a, in a state and, and uh, look, we kind of pick it up mid-sentence because I did catch everyone on the hop. Um, where I kind of slumped down. Uh, yeah, you won't hear Hamish saying much because he doesn't quite know what's going on, and I'm trying to write to him and describe what's happening. I I'm thought, not- in my defence, because I might come in a little bit too jovial here, I can't re- quite remember, but I thought we were still having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a second to realise we weren't having a laugh at this particular point. This is how we're doing. Um... But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. I can't Maybe even. If you... I can't even remember the show. I can't even remember being on that show. Let's get on with we'll it. We'll be Very fine. Good. Let's eat. Maybe no jokes with food for the meantime. No, I don't think tonight now is the time for jokes. You're having an anxiety attack. You d- <laughs> I'll get you tomorrow. I'll get you tomorrow. It's really bizarre. It's I don't I don't feel all, all it is is uh, obviously feeling vulnerable and feeling like you're going to be hurt. You know, within the next however long you'll 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 be hurt. I can't hear you, but you look serious, and I want you to know that I'm there for you <laughs> as a buddy. <laughs> You've got to have these moments, mate. This is this, the guy gave you a ten percent chance of making it. All the eye doctors took their patches off in one hour. This is, I would say, this is very normal. This is the hardest part of the challenge. So tonight we eat like kings. We yes, eat. let's eat and drink like kings. With disabilities. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most, de- definitely for our radio show, we've been in scary situations before, but um, this was easily the worst 
feeling I've had. It was it was and hard for me too because I could see you were upset. I could see what was going on, but until you wrote it down on your pad, I didn't really know what was going through your head. I did, as you might have heard, react very positively to you saying, let's eat like kings. <laughs> yeah. I did think that your strategy to have a delicious dinner was the best way to get through this. <laughs> but the, strangely enough, I went and played golf straight after we finished um, last night at 7.30. Yeah. And just by myself on the third hole, had the same thing. Uh, as you know, don't cry very often. On the third hole, let it out. Same feeling of emotion of just how grateful and how much I've taken for granted that what we have uh, compared to people that go through this every day. And uh, and while I, I guess we're blessed, yeah, I'm very of thankful course. for that. These guys are absolute absolute heroes. There's plenty more. You didn't of, sorry, you didn't just hit a bad shot. Did I you? did hit yeah. a bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to cover it. No, amazing. And and that's the whole point we did this mm. to learn to actually go through what it's like to be cut off from the world and from people in such a way. Hey Mish and Andy. Our See No Evil, Hear No Evil challenge of 50 hours. Myself without vision, you ham without hearing. Now, still to come on the show, we obviously have the moment where we got our uh, our senses back. Yeah. And what a triumphant moment that was. <laughs> One final surprise. It is. <laughs> you don't want to miss that, uh, I should say. And that will be on 7 p.m. as well tonight. But, Haim, we had, I mean, we're going about our day, but I couldn't watch television. No. Nope. Obviously, and you know you had a PlayStation yep. to be able to play Loved as well, it. and uh, you were, you know, again thinking of me. Well, and this, and this whole thing is about teamwork. Before this weekend started, I did a little bit of preparation. I thought, yes, I'm going to be playing a lot of FIFA at Andy's house, a lot of soccer mm. on the PlayStation. He can't be involved, although we did have one match. Yeah, yeah. Where I beat you eight nil yeah. convincingly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you weren't having a lot of fun with that, including and my goalkeeper kicking a goal. You did. <laughs> you did kick your own goal, um, and I appreciated that, but I didn't need the help. <laughs> And I thought, going into the weekend, audio book. Wouldn't it be great if I could get Andy an audio book? Now, Ham, you can go to iTunes yeah. and uh, the greatest authors in the world, they're, they're all there and you can get the not, books. And I was very not keen the one, to find out what you got me. Not the one I wanted, though. I went to yeah. iTunes to buy an iBook and it didn't have my favourite book at the moment, was No it? Excuses by Commando Steve, <laughs> the military trainer off The Biggest Loser. <laughs> It's a new title, he, and I don't think he's had the time because he's always doing push-ups oh, and chin-ups mate. and stuff I can't, and swinging he must cars have... around by an hockey strap <laughs> throwing them off balconies. My guess is, just from hearing a little bit of this audio book, Ham, uh, that you prepared. Yeah. Uh, no well, that's excuses. the thing because he hasn't read it yet. I had to make the audio book myself. Yeah. I had to go, come in here to work and read the book <laughs> yeah. on to CD. <laughs> now, now, I'm surprised uh, Steve, Commando Steve had time to write it. He probably didn't. In between. He probably yelled, every at it, fourth, yelled it at someone and they took it down. Every fourth word would have been a grunt that they've just edited out because yeah. he's dictating it during push-ups, <laughs> during midnight push-ups. But Ando, I... Um, it was a surprise to me. It was a gift. I, I was trying to give you a gift while so I could just distract you for a bit and go off and play some PlayStation. This is how it went. A bit of a present, mate. What present? I know you are bored, so I got you an audio book. It's by Commando Steve from The Biggest Loser. No excuses. As read, as read. by me. When I was 18, I started working security at a nightclub down the road. Then I moved down to Harvey Bay. I lived there for about six months. I avoided home as much as possible and trained and worked. I thought I'd take... Moments a later. ...with a sledgehammer, followed by another so 500 boring. meter row. That smashed me. Afterwards, I ended up in the medics' tent. Is it inspiring you? Is it a good audio book? No. And as a father, surely my family comes first. What a load of rubbish. All right, well, maybe do want some live stuff. For someone with a reasonable amount of fitness, it's not a hard position. Lots of them had their backsides in the air in a shape more like the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And I'm going, come on, guys, get your backsides down. They're obviously hurting. They've only just started in the house and they're like... It. Who's this commando? We're getting out grubby and dirty, crawling around on the ground. We're scratched, we're bruised. I was making them hold that position. Andy, you've closed the book. Stop. No more commando, Steve. Now I just have to go from memory. On Monday, I was bloody knackered. <laughs> I'd been doing push-ups all weekend and I hadn't eaten or slept and all I'd eaten was a dingo's head. When I got to the Harbour Bridge, it had fallen down and I had to hold it up for four months while everyone drove across it. <laughs> Steve, buzz off. Okay, mate. <laughs> Andy had written in his desperation a hastily scrawled sign in his notebook that just said, Steve, buzz off. 
Last night, 7.30, marked our 50 hours since uh, you'd had your hearing removed and my vision removed as well. It was a triumphant moment. How was the last hour? Just a lot of counting down. And because you, obviously, as a blind person, couldn't see the clock. I didn't see the time the whole weekend. There was just a lot of, what time is it? Still got 58 minutes, Ando. (laughs) Come on. Just listen to a CD or something, (laughs) and then at the end we'll be very close. Hey, we should thank uh, Louis. The audiologist yeah. who helped you out uh, yeah. with the plugs, uh, etc. Dr. Michael Coote and also uh, uh, Associate Professor Zoran Georgiesk- uh, Georgievsky, I think his name was. They did a great job. Our medical team. It's good to have a medical team. Yeah. Um, God, it makes you feel important. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, we thank them so much for their support, the Eye and Ear Hospital. If you do get uh, any onset of any of the you know, hearing or eye problems, make sure you go and check it out because I think... I can't remember the stat completely, but I think it was 90% are preventable. Absolutely. Here's a quick stat before we get to us finishing our challenge. Did you know this? There's such a thing as sympathetic eye, right? So if you've got something wrong with one of your eyes, mm. I thought the way it would work is your other eye would get better. you get yeah. super eye and yeah. it would pick up the slack. If you don't get it treated, yeah. your other eye, has. there's something called sympathetic eye where your other eye starts just losing its ability as well. To go oh, a bit really? of, I don't want to show off in front of the uh, <laughs> the guy over here. I don't want to show off in front of the left eye. When I thought it would be, well, we're I, a team, he's a little bit weaker, so I'll I pick up the slack. Or he'd be the physical trainer and he'd start yeah. yelling at the other eye. Come, Come on, on, pick it up. Give me twenty twenty. No, so if you don't get it treated, your perfectly good eye just goes, well, if he's not trying, I'm not either. And it just gives up. So get it treated. Yeah, get it treated. Um, Haim, it was the moment, 7.30 last night. After yeah. 50 hours, another argument broke out because we wanted to know who was going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it all went down. I'm first. No, you must not be able to hear me properly. I'm first. No. Paper, scissors, rock. Paper, scissors, rock. Ready? One, One two, two three. three. Yeah, rock. I got rock. You didn't get rock. What'd you get? I got scissors. Oh. I caught. Okay, go again. Three. One, One two, two, three. three. Yeah, I got paper. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> So Hamish was to remove his earmuffs, the headphones playing music underneath them, and the deep earplugs underneath them. I'll go first. Okay, okay go I'll first. I'll make sure all the lights are down for you as well. Go first. Are we ready? It's time. It's time. Okay, where are you sitting? <sighs> it's time. You, where are you sitting to get, take it off? What, here we go. I'm just going to kneel down in front of you first. First, okay. I'm taking the headphones off. Uh, the outer shell is removed. It's like when Luke takes off Anakin Skywalker's <laughs> mask and Darth Vader. Next, the ambient noise is off. Wow. Oh, I can hear a little bit better. The plugs are still out. I can, can you, now I can hear muffled voices. But the plugs, like, they've, oh, they've been in my ear canal for 50 hours. Oh, God, they're in so deep. Oh, there's a lot of squelching. Oh my god. Left one's out. Do you feel heat better? Oh my god. <laughs> I can really. I was speaking so loud. It was, I know. Why don't you say something? I said it a thousand <laughs> times. It was then time for Andy to take off the glasses and the medical grade eye patches that had robbed him of his vision for the last 50 hours. Let's start with the sunnies off first. Done a great job. Here we go. There they are. Oh. Let me take those for you. Thanks, mate. And I think I'm going to go both eyes at the same time. Yeah, just one motion. motion. Ready? It's slightly attached to my eyebrows, so I'm just going to try and get it. What he didn't know is that I was gloriously naked. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the glory of the world, Ando! Why would you do that? I haven't been wearing clothes for two days! <laughs> We did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! What's it like? What's it like? (laughs) (laughs) They're the sounds uh, I will make if I'm ever chased by an albino sea lion. (laughs) Because <laughs> I think that was a very similar reaction. Just enjoy the glory of uh, of mankind, Ando. Uh, I wanted you to see what I thought would be one of the most beautiful things in the world. We'll be on the 7pm project. That bit I'm going to make sure is there. But HamishNanny.com, if you want to go and see it right now, the pictures are all there of the weekend. There was just a lot of Andy shrieking, Get out of my house! <laughs>